What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video looking at the host command. Now I've done plenty of videos where I talked about DNS. I've even shown how to actually set up a, your own DNS forwarding server. And then within that video, I covered a couple of tools like dig, ifconfig and others. Well, I wanted to go down and show you guys the host command. This is basically a DNS utility that you can use to accomplish the exact same thing as the dig command. But this command has been around for a very long time and I just wanted to go down and cover it so you guys can get a clear understanding of how to actually use the host command. So let's get started. Okay, cool. So I have my terminal up and let's walk through the host command right fast. First thing I like to do is always open up the man page. So let's go man host, press enter. That'll bring up the, uh, the man page for the host command. Uh, and it's actually the manual and this is part of a tool part of a bunch of tools that come with bind So as long as you have bind install most of the time you have bind installed by default on your distribution so uh, this tool will be included within the utilities, but it says uh, DNS lookup utility and then this is the synopsis it has a whole bunch of options you know that's basically how you actually run the command so it's basically host uh, then the options and then the name the domain name and or the server IP address if you want to and I'll walk through how to actually run it uh, once we get done with this but it says host is a simple utility for performing DNS lookups it is normally used to convert names to IP addresses and vice versa when no arguments or options are given, host prints a short summary of its command line arguments and options. It says name is the domain name that is to be looked up. It can also be a dotted decimal IP version 4 address or a colon delimited IP version 6 address. In which case host by default performs a reverse lookup for the address. Server is... An optional argument which is either the name or IP address of the name server that hosts should query instead of the server or servers listed in etc resolve.config and then here are the options I'm gonna go through and show you guys the main ways I actually use the command so let's go down and quit this right fast so we can get to the examples so let's hit Q for quit that'll take us back to our terminal and first off, let me explain what DNS is. DNS is basically domain name server. And basically how it works is when you type in a domain name, let's say google.com, the computer doesn't understand google.com. So it has to translate that name to an IP address so it can point you to the right direction. So, so when you have your browser open and you type google.com, it's a couple things that happen. First thing, it hits your local DNS server or the DNS server that's out on the web and it translate that IP address, send the IP address back to your computer, basically saying this is where you're trying to go. And then you'll go, your browser will go to that IP address. So that's basically all it is. It's just a translation of domain names to IP addresses. And sometimes as a network administrator or a systems administrator, uh, you need to find out what the IP address of a domain is. So the easiest way is to use the host command. Now let's go on and do it against my main website right fast. So you guys can actually see it, but let's type host and then let's type keep it techie.com and press enter and that'll return the address so basically all this tool is doing is using the dns servers to query the ip address of a domain name for you and printing it out on the screen and as you can see it says keepitechie.com has address 34.71.101.164 so that's the ip address of that server that it's sitting on 
no let's run this against a i don't know a public website or some other website uh let's run it against yahoo.com so yahoo dot com and press enter and you'll see that it looks a little different you'll see that yahoo.com is actually hosted on multiple servers that have multiple ip addresses so and sometimes that's the case depending on the company that's actually housing this website and this is basically done for redundancy so if one of those servers go down goes down then you'll end up going to one of the other websites that'll keep the site up and everything and then also as you can see right here it actually pulls in some extra information and this is basically letting you know how mail is handled so these are the mail na name servers so to speak now let me show you what else the host command can actually do you can actually do a reverse lookup so let's say you actually know the ip address which is right here we know what the ip address is but let's say you want to let's say you found this ip address somewhere or it's in some notes somewhere you know that you're trying to find out what is hosted on that ip address well you can type host and then paste in the ip address and it'll give you the translation of that ip address it tells you that it is a yahoo.com server and that looks kind of weird so let's look at my ip address right fast uh which is right here so let's type uh host and it should bring back the domain name which kind of doesn't but this you'll see that this is a google so it points to google basically now if we look back up here above where we ran it against uh uh yahoo.com as you can see they have a uh, couple different types of addresses that come in here this is the mail address now there are a bunch of records most of the time that you can actually query uh, for a domain name <laughs> for instance there's the ns record which is name server record there is the c name record there's the mx record these are all the records that can be associated with a domain that's not all of them it's a, it's a couple more that you can actually use but i just want to talk about the most common so ns stands for name server but let's say we want to just query the name servers for this ip address the records the name server records now we could type in host and then dash t for type basically that's what it means but you could type in ns let's say you want to look up the ns record and let's look at ubuntu.com and press enter as you can see that's the name servers so right there is the name servers ns3 ns1 ns2 cool and actually let me run host against uh ubuntu.com so you got something to compare it to but that basically gives you that information up here uh, the name server information now let's go down and type in host and let's look at the mx records for this thing so let's type dash t and then let's look at the mx records like i said ubuntu.com and press enter and that'll pull in the mx record for mail so that's how mail is handled right there now let's say we want to look at the c name record which basically stands for canonical name record i hope i'm saying that right i believe that's yeah canonical name record that's what c name stands for i had to look it up a while back for something i was it was a website i was working on i was trying to understand what c name actually was used for and it's basically a name record and it basically maps to one domain to another domain so it's kind of like a forwarder record but let's go on and see if we can pull in anything for Ubuntu.com, which I doubt it because it shouldn't redirect to anything. Um, so what's going on? So let's go C name and press enter. And there are no C name records for that. And let me see if anything else will bring up a C name, which I doubt it. Um, yeah, that's not gonna have a C name either um let's try my domain which i'm sure doesn't have a redirect 
So keepertechie.com, press enter. Yeah, no C name record. So we get to go on that. But that's how you actually pull up the C name record if you need to, or whatever type of record that you're actually looking for for that domain address. Now, let me go down and clear right fast because there are some options to pull in uh, IP version 4 versus IP version 6. I wanted to show you guys those address or those uh, options as well. So all you got to do is put dash 4 and then let's type uh, Ubuntu.com again, press enter, boom. And that forces it to query using IP version 4. And the exact same thing for IP ip version 6 so all we have to do is put dash 6 and that'll force it to pull the ip version 6 addresses which i may have an issue with that because i have ip version 6 turned off on my network i'm not sure yeah i'm, I'm not going to get any any results for that so but there's one more thing I want to actually show you guys in is the dash a option. And this basically gives you all the details for a domain name. And I'll break down each section, you know, as it breaks it down on the thing. So let's go down and type host and then dash a, and then let's do Ubuntu.com again and press enter. And as you can see, it brings in like four different sections. Uh, well, it only brought in two for this case and for this uh, domain name, it pulled in only two sections, but let me break them all down for you. This is the header information up here, but then you got question. This is the question section. So this is basically what you asked. Uh, so you asking for Ubuntu.com in any. So basically you're trying to find out what the IP address of Ubuntu.com now this is the answer section and the answer section basically breaks out the ip addresses for that domain name itself but there's also another section that it typically does or it typically pulls in it all depends on the domain you're looking for but there's an authority section and this basically pulls in the name servers which i'm not sure why i didn't pull it in but then also there is an additional section but as you can see right here, these are the name servers right here anyway. So I guess it put it put them all under the answer section, but it used to break it out. I remember it used to break that out. But anyway, we'll roll with it. And then also, you know, it typically has like an additional section. It'll show you a little bit more detail, uh, kind of like the dig command. It'll show you, you know, it'll basically resolve those uh name servers to an ip address uh, it basically shows you those ip addresses for that as well but it's all good whatever uh that but this is how you actually use the host command so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel uh check out my video i did on the dig command where i just basically broke it all out uh how to actually use dig which is very similar to using the host command but if you don't have dig install host it should be on your distribution of linux now i hope you guys have a good evening and keep it techie